Hi, Bobby Shaw here. Welcome to day one of the art challenge. I am so excited. I want to go over a couple things first. First, I want to encourage you to watch the video in full first before you pick up your paintbrushes. The reason is I don't want you, to, especially if this is your first time doing watercolor, I don't want you to be tempted to paint the exact same sample painting that I I'm going to paint for you today. I will go over a technique, show you how to use in the painting, and then I will post some pictures of some ideas uh, that's different than mine that you can use. So, um, so watch the video in entirety first. That's my recommendation. I will go over some tips right now uh, how to set up your workspace for day one so you could set up your painting and your paintbrushes and stuff. So let's get started. Bear with me, this is my first time, so I'm going to be switching the camera just so you can see. All right, so here I have a watercolor paper I cut out. This is about, I cut six by six by six. You see it's pretty small. You don't have to do the exact same size, but I recommend somewhat small for your for watercolor because uh, it's a little overwhelming to start with a huge painting with watercolor. So... I cut this out. Now what you were going to do, uh, what I have here also is a really piece of, just a crap piece of cardboard, which is fine. So you want to get a piece of cardboard, a piece of glass, anything laying around that you could tape your painting on. So when you saturate with water, or if you don't tape it down, it will bubble up like this. And it's just, it's just very frustrating. All right. So what you're going to do, you're going to get masking tape, painter's tape. Uh, you can get this at Home Depot, Lowe's. You probably have it laying around your house. This is like an old, old roll I had forever. So what you're going to do, you're going to go around. And I'm going to show you a trick. I am putting it on, I put it on my knee a couple times to get some lint on it. The reason why, it makes it a little less sticky. So when you pull, after you're done your painting, when you pull it off, it won't rip as much. I had uh, a couple times where I didn't do this and had a really nice painting, and when I pulled it off, it ripped the paper, and it was just so frustrating. So I don't want you doing that. So see how I taped just the edge here, and then go all the way around. This is the only thing about watercolor you really have to prep, unlike a canvas where you don't have to deal with taping things down. And it will bubble up a little bit sometimes. And I have a, uh, after you've done your painting, I'll show you how to get all the bubbles out, but at least it will stay flat when you're working on your artwork here. All right, just make sure you know it's flat. All right, so it'll look like, let me move the camera a little more. It'll look like that. Okay, now what I have here, so I have you up, I just have a piece of styrofoam from like chicken. You can use that for your palette, so you don't have to go out and buy expensive paint palettes. These work fine, and you're kind of recycling them, so you just throwing them out. You can actually repurpose them. And then I have another repurpose item. This is what I use for water. It, I use this so much. This is actually just a soda, a two liter bottle cut from the bottom. And I use them to fill water because when I taught kids, you could barely, kids, when you do like the tall glasses, they knock over and you get water everywhere. So if you have little kids, this is perfect for crafts and art projects because I never had these tip on me at all. All right, so I got this tape, okay? You got your water, your palette. Now what we're going to do to start with, I'm going to take, take one of your watercolor papers and if it's, it might, I don't know what size you have at home. This is, I think it's like 12 by 18. If you don't have anything this big, don't worry about it. You can work on the front and then flip it over and work on the back. What this is, I made, you know, you don't have to do measure it out, but I just like to be neat and tidy. I have 21 rectangles so I got three and all down here and each week um, I'm going to teach you a couple techniques and I and you can write the technique here do the technique so at the end of the class 
what you have is a whole page of techniques with the name. So if you want to paint later on, later on and you forget it, it's kind of like a really nice reference guide to have. Like, oh yeah, I remember I can scrumble or, or whatever, or glaze. And, and it's just really, I just, I really like having this around. So this you do not have to tape down. So don't worry about taping this down because we're not really saturating the whole paper. We're just doing little things here. So we're going to start with this today. So the first one we have is called a solid wash. Let's see if I can do this with one hand <laughs> so I can show you this better. But all right. So what you're going to do, you're going to, this is actually a, a round brush. So it's round. Okay. Um, there's different sizes. You can use a bigger one for this. I'm going to use kind of a medium since we are using the small section and you're going to literally just paint the whole section with water now if you are using a pan set what you would do all you have to do is dip uh, let's use red some water in there and just use it okay if you're using tubes like I recommend. I'm going to put this down so I can open this. Alright. Alright. This is not like poster paint or acrylic paint. You don't need much at all. A lot of like uh, younger kids that I taught like wants to squeeze half the bottle out because they think they need a lot. You literally need like a pea size. Not, that's even a lot for what we're doing but I'm going to be using it for the painting today. Okay, so to use this, you're going to actually like put some water next to it and then drag the paint into it. And you can always add more, but watercolor is pretty concentrated. So we're going to go back to our wash. It's supposed to be wet, still wet. Sure, I really, some paper dries out. All right, so I'm going to take my paint. And I'm going to just paint a light wash of color over the whole surface. It's supposed to look uniform. Okay. That is called a solid wash. All right. For the second one, it's called a graden wash. Right, I'll use my um, my pan paints just to show you how to use them. So same thing, you're going to paint the whole surface. And then you get to pick a color. Let's do something different. Uh, I like purple. So this one, you're going to start at the top. Should use it a little darker. And as you get, just use water and just bring it down. So it's supposed to get lighter as it goes down. So the dark color goes to the top, or you can do from bottom to top, whatever. Okay? That is called a grading wash. Okay? And the last one. Is called glaze. Now I already painted this because you gotta let it dry and for the sake of time. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna paint um, a dark and a light color, let it dry before you put the color on top. Otherwise, it'll mix. So this is completely dry. So glaze is when you take. Use. Say I'm using my pan brushes again. I think for the pan, I'll use the tube. You're going to do. A light color on top and you can see it changes a little bit of the blue and maybe like a light blue so I picked up a little bit of this uh, not enough apparently okay so that's kind of more like a layer of colors. 
that changes the look once they cross over. So that's glazing. They got solid wash, graden wash, and glazing. All right. Now I'm going to show you how to use these simple techniques in a very simple painting. I know the paintings will get a little more difficult throughout the weeks, but this is a really good starter painting. So I'll put it here. All right, put this aside. Let it dry. Okay, now you have. I'm going to adjust the C. And I might lift it up and move it around so you can see better. I can't do everything with one hand. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do um, a whole bunch of washes. It's going to kind of be part green and wash, part solid. And um, the idea is kind of make like a sky sunset uh, look. You, you don't have to do a sunset, and you don't even have to use the same colors I'm using. You could do shades of blue, and you do an, um, an underwater ocean scene, or anything you want. But I just like sunsets, so I am going to, again, wet the top. I might actually want to go bigger here, because it's getting more brown. I love to wet my paper sometimes a little too much. I love the wet and wet technique, which I'll show you next week. Okay, so I am, again, using two paint and just dab a little, just like I showed you. You can also use your pan paint. So you got it. not using much at all. And, you, and like I said, you can always add more. And I'm kind of kind of going to do a wash, but also a grading wash with the blue. So I'm going to start dark on the top. And I'm going to gradually go down to about one, eh, almost one third of the page where it's almost dying off. And I'll, I'll move the camera in a minute. So I have something like this. Maybe I can do this one hand. I don't know. See how talented I am, right? <laughs> okay. Next, and, and you don't have to use the same color, obviously. I'm going to paint a little more water down here to do the next color. I'm going to just get red. And I'm going to actually do a grading wash, but I'm going to start it in the middle and then lighten it up as it goes up. So I want it to blend with the blue and I want it to taper out for the next color. So what you're going to get, hopefully, is a little purple in between because blue and red make purple. And like I said, you can always add more. I have it pretty wet. And the thing about watercolor, you could do it very lightly, let it dry, and if you feel like eh, it's just too light, you could just add layers to it. Same thing on top. So watercolor is a lot about layering. Unlike, um, if you're probably used to like, uh, if you're uh, younger, poster paint or acrylic, if you're older, you know, and you mix the, you mix the paint and you just put it on. Um, here, it's a lot of layering. Again, I'm going to wet this. I'm going to do the, the darkest of yellow down here. Uh, you know what? I don't have the... I'm going to keep going back and forth because I'm just... I break all the rules with art, right? <laughs> well, it gives you an idea how to use both. I just work my way up. This should get a little tense of orange too and you can go back you know if you feel like oh that's not bright enough red you can add a little more red okay so you can see how like you overlap a little bit which is kind of like great um glaze not quite but if you let it dry and go over it, it'll be more of a of a glaze uh, you can see how this is 
a wash, but it's also a graden wash where you're going dark to light. Um, so you can use all these techniques. You could you don't have to use them all. You could just do you don't have to do the glazing. You can just do the washes, which is fine. It's up to you. Okay, so you're gonna end up with something like that. Any color you choose, you could throw in purple. I don't know, like I. I have like a whole bunch of different colors here, so uh, I don't know what set you got, but you might have a variety of colors you might want to play with. So, all right. So after that dries, and for the sake of the video, I already pre-made ones. I'm gonna get that because this will take a while to dry. I don't want, think you want to hear a hair blower me blowing it. <laughs> all right, I got me space here. I put my other one on a big, huge plexiglass that I paint a lot of my paintings on, and it's pretty big. So I'm going to have to adjust here, move you closer. All right. So this is all dry. If you noticed, it did bubble up a little bit, but I will show you how to fix that when we're done here. But after you're completely done, you're finished with your product, and it's dry. Okay. I am going to get some black out. I'm probably just going to use my pan brush, but I don't even have black. I wish I do. I don't use a lot of black, personally, so that's why I don't probably have it in the tube. Here we go. I do. All right. I can open that. Oh, this is the pan brush, I guess. <clears throat> anyway, if this was black, you would just use very little of it. All right, so you're going to want a very small round brush or a liner brush. This is a liner brush. This is kind of really used. Let me, it's hard to do. There we go. It's kind of tall and... Um, this is very used, but usually it's kind of frayed by now, but it's tall and skinny. And this is a small round brush. I'm going to try to do this one-handed again. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to make a silhouette. I'm going to do a very, very simple one because, you know, you're not used to painting. But you, I am going to post pictures on the group of different silhouettes with different backgrounds just to give you some inspiration. But if you want to Google, just Google silhouettes because... It's, if you never paint, silhouettes are pretty easy to do. So, like, if you want to be in van to do a giraffe or an elephant, or like I said, if you want to make this all blue and do, like, fish under the sea or whatever, totally fine. I'm just going to do grass and some small birds flying away because that's the simplest I think I can make it. Just for simple, being simple here. So I'm going to... Uh, put some water in here first because it's pan paint. Now, if this was, like, if I was using black, I would just do a little more concentrated dab in water if I was using, um, two paint. All right, but right now I'm using pan because apparently I can't get my black open. I don't use it a lot, so it probably dried. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to make, it's going to be really hard one-handed, but you get the picture. Just grass, like tall. You could do mountains in the back, just simple mountains. Um, I mean, this is very simple. This actually reminds me under to see the seaweed growing, but... Just, I'm um, just doing whatever. If you want, you can even add some flowers. Just have fun with it. Like I said, you can do uh, animals, you can do, um, 
I've done silhouettes of like children swinging on the swing, which is a little harder, but. And the very simple here. Just trying to. Just anything. I'm not going to spend a lot of time because I'm just trying to show you an idea. Okay. And then if you want. You just do like, I mean, this is the simplest, you know, your, I mean, it could be really simple, seriously. Or you can make, if you look at uh, Google Silhouettes, it could be very, you could do a lot more detail. So it's whatever you want, okay? So you don't have to use these colors. You don't have to use the Silhouette, I mean, I use. I just sort of made it up real quick in my head. I didn't copy or... I just want to do something simple to show you how easy it can be. All right, and so that is it. So work on your washes. Uh, if you want, you don't have to, I mean, you don't have to do anything, but I, I really recommend this. This is really nice to have to, um, to go back on. So I would uh, label, you know, grade and wash, solid wash, do the practice. And then look at some um, ideas, the silhouettes, get an idea of what you want to do. And work on your paint and post it and for everyone to see. We'd love to see it and share our creations, all right? <clears throat> Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great time, great fun this week, and I'll see you next week. All right, bye.